ของคนทีจิตโย่ what it do what it do Saint Louis y'all know what it is it's time for Saint Louis hustle with your girl Michelle A and Cortez hustle I know I mess up every time I come in here with my yo but today's video we're talking about um what are we talking about how to overcome adversity with a special guest Uh, yes. Mr. Reginald Foreman. So we're not going to delay any play around any further, y'all. We're going to go ahead and roll this intro. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy. And most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs in a barrel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city, or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy. Oh, my bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right, do it again. It ain't never been easy. <laughs> What's going on, Michelle? Eh? What up, man? What's going on? What's good with you today? Hey, man. Everything is everything. Just trying to stay stay safe out here in these St. Louis streets. Man, growing up in the streets of St. Louis ain't easy. <laughs> it ain't easy, <laughs> man. No, it is not easy. Uh, so, uh, you know, how was your weekend? Man, man, oh man, oh man. Okay, so let me just let me take a little sip of my concoction. Here. Let me do. Just... I'm a, I'm a. Can I sip? It's just yeah. For the, for the, yeah, that's it, right. They know. say you got to keep warm liquids going down for the Rona. So right. yes, okay. It's for the corona. It ain't no Corona, but it's for the Corona. There you go. Look. Mm. There you go. Right there. So um. Right. So here's my disclaimer. Right. There are power is power in words. So I'm going to just say that this is my disclaimer. Don't take this too serious, y'all. OK, that you got to take the power out of words. Everybody's running around her. The whole world It's a global pandemic kind of situation with this whole uh, what um, uh, I keep jacking the word up. But the. Uh, Uh, canola. I just, I just said that that good word. With the the C O V COVID nineteen. Uh, I found that easier to say sometimes than the Corona. COVID nineteen. Girl said it. Corona. <laughs> What's the girl Cardi B? She said the Corona virus. Yes. <laughs> the power out of it. Everybody's like, oh my god, the Corona virus. It's the Corona. Mm -mm, Corona virus. <laughs> Corona is not playing with us, y'all. Okay, Corona's not playing. You wonder why stuff ain't showing up. She said on her little thing. She said you wonder why your um your clothes ain't showed up from your your uh what's everybody order from that one site uh 
gosh darn it, because my kids order from this little site. You <laughs> said not the wish site, because wish don't never show up. Oh. <laughs> wish never shows up. That's that it's all in the name. Um, she said, but you was you wonder why your fashion over ain't showed up? The, cor- <laughs> the corona <laughs> the coronavirus. That's why it ain't showed up. So what's going on with me? I tried to enjoy 314 uh day over the weekend. Mm-hmm. It happened. Couldn't yeah. because of the coronavirus. <laughs> Interrupted the 314. I was trying to go everywhere, but they were shutting stuff down, Cortez. Yeah. Because yeah. the coronavirus <laughs> had folks in an uproar. The, the people had the, you know, the look, the red, white, and blue on and everything. People was trying to get the uh, party on, but yeah. they were shutting stuff down so bad. And you, here's my thing What's with everybody buying all the toilet paper? Oh. I mean, do the corona do the corona bags get you to do it get you to run do it get you to book? <laughs> well, I didn't know what's going on. Why is everybody buying up on the toilet paper? Well, my good the- friend, my good friend Larry Haley said it's scaring the mess out of everybody. So that's why you need the <laughs> tissue. <laughs> Here, here's the scary part. They buying up all the toilet paper, but I still see soap on the shelf in abundance. What's that? <laughs> Something wrong with that picture. They buying up all the toilet paper, but I still see tons of soap on the shelf. <laughs> What's well, going on? Coronavirus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Somebody ain't washing good. That's what I say. <laughs> What's going on, people? Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm saying make you think. What's what's really going on now? What's what's really going on out here? And then also in the stores. You can't get what you need. And then people out her elbow. Now it was in the beginning with the co- with the uh coronavirus coronavirus. Every time you say it, you just gotta say it. <laughs> you gotta it. say it like that. You gotta say it the Cardi B way. You should stick your tongue out, but it just depends on where you at. <laughs> um, but, there, but you know what I'm saying? In the beginning, it was everybody was like, oh, don't you know, touch each other elbow. But in the stores now, people elbowing. It's not like a friendly elbow, it's like give me the tissue. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. a jab elbow. It's not a <laughs> elbow. They got the corona elbow now. It's not cool. It, it's really not cool. But all because of the corona. I think corona is a female. Like you know how they give the storms names? Like they make the storm like Hurricane um uh, uh Aretha or mm-hmm. Hurricane uh um, mm-hmm. Keisha. Corona virus, that's a female. <laughs> that's a female. <laughs> Mm, yeah, she's a female. Oh, Corona's definitely a female. She's jacking <laughs> folks up. She's hemming folks up. She's got brothers by the little <laughs> Come here. Just, she, just give me back what, what you gave me. She's a woman's you know, corn. <laughs> yeah, she's a woman's <laughs> She's a woman after a one-night stand. Oh, I'm, like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> I, yeah, I we... um. Got into the store a little bit, and and I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong, but the whole Thornton clan is gonna be messed up if this thing is more serious than what I believe. I just ain't been taking it that serious, man. Uh, we ain't go stock up. We ain't got no canned goods, man. We ain't got no. Um, I, I mean, we tried to go get some potatoes and some rice. Uh, they was it was all gone. Got some beans in there, man, but I. I just don't know if we prepared. If this is it, man, we're going to be one of the first to go. Cause we, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't know if we're taking it serious enough. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm all happy go lucky. Uh, everything going to be all right in the morning. And the morning might not come for us, uh, uh, Michelle, because we just don't have, uh, <laughs> we just ain't, we, you know, we pulled up on that snook slot and it was so freaking packed. My wife was like, I ain't going in there. Yeah, I was like, well, right. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. Man, I, we went last night. We was in the line last night, and I was in uh, the checkout line. And and I, I'm going I'm to be honest with you. I was the same way. My kids are grown, and so it's just me. And I just, I was in the 20 items or less line, and it was like all the way back. And people were coming around the corner, like they was doing their shopping, and they would come around the corner and see the lines, and they would put their stuff back. They'd be like, shit, it's not worth it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go and just die out. That's okay. I just, I'm gonna just go to the liquor store. Just, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get a fifth or something and some snacks. Yeah. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just wait this thing out. I'm gonna just right. 
get drunk and get cool off Cheetos. That's what they're making the decision to do. You know? Um, yeah, I, no, I, I ain't no doubt about it, man. It's like, you know, we got a few little ramen noodles in there, man. And, uh, man, I was like, yeah, yeah, I gonna we, we gonna be some fast and praying some guns is what's gonna happen if <laughs> if it's more serious. Know, I have a neighbor and God bless her, I love her to death. She's a sweet, sweet lady, but she always come knock on my door and borrow the most random things. <laughs> like she came the other day. I whisper, I use my inside voice. I don't want her to hear me because she's sweet. She, I love her to death, but she come borrow random things. Mm -hmm. She knocked on my door the other day and she's like, Miss Michelle, you you got two potatoes I can borrow. <laughs> and then like one time she's like you, you got a stick of butter I can borrow she wanted two cloves of butter one time. I mean two cloves of garlic one time I was like <laughs> random, oh, random. and, and let's, let's not borrow food items you're not giving that back and, unless you're going to come back with the whipped mashed potatoes with the garlic in the butter you're not giving those back so stop it <laughs> I have a chicken I can borrow. Do you want a meal? Can I feed you? Is that what you need? Can I feed you some meal? Could you? Good for a meal, I think. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Gotcha. So, All yeah. right. Well, before we get to our interview with uh, Mr. Reggie, uh, powerful, powerful stuff, man. We, we normally do what's cracking in the loo, right? But right. Um, the way this coronavirus is set up, uh, ain't nothing cracking in the loo. <laughs> oh. My God. So here's so here's what I did, right? So mm -hmm. I went out there and um or, um I did go to the you know calendar because I had it I had anticipated trying to find something to do this weekend because I'd be liking to get out there and do stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So um here's what I did find, right? Um uh on the 17th, which is uh is that today? That's today, mm -hmm. the St. Patrick's Day um parade, yep. right? Yep. Canceled <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. On the um, uh, 20th, right, is the um, uh, Festival of Laughs. Cancel. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, oh, oh. On the 21st, uh, it is the uh, oh, St. Louis Bee Festival. Hey, yeah. Cancel. Virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, oh, here it is. You know what? Look at God. It is the black tie masquerade ball. Cancel. <laughs> you might as well trade your black tie in for a yellow mask and sit in your living room because it's canceled. Yeah. Coronavirus. Ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody doing it. I'm yeah. so sorry. Sorry. Cancel. Wow. Yeah. I, sorry. I What's going on? Coronavirus. Told my sit son the same Look, thing. You know, you know what you can Invest in some Uno cards. That's what you can do. Sit in your living room with your family and play Uno. That's what's going on this weekend. Monopoly is going on this weekend. Well, well, you know what this thing is really coming down to? It's mm. coming down to attack on your relationship with Christ. See, they first said when uh, yeah, yeah, let me break it down to you, Shell. They first said okay. they, they first said that you can't gather with more than two hundred and fifty people. Mm. Then uh, they said, no, nah, we're going to break that down to 200. So if you guys, you can't be in no place where you and 199 other folks, uh, uh, we're going to come and shut it down. Then uh, they said 50, right? Uh, and then I heard my president, because I'm going to claim him as my president. I know people don't like to claim him as their president, but my president of these whole United States came out yesterday and said, no, if it's more than 10 of y'all together, we're going to have some problems. You know what they're trying to get down to, Michelle? They're trying to get down to where two or three are gathered uh -huh. in my name. I think that's what's about to happen. They're trying to you know isolate they all of us to where you can't even get together with your Lord and Savior. I, I think that's what's happening. But you know what? The devil is alive. <laughs> okay, the devil is alive. Oh. I, mm, I, you lucky I ain't got my church hat. The devil's a lie. You know what? The devil's a lie. Because here's where he messed up. See, folk get online and, and, and get to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Right. First of all, folk ain't going to listen. That's that's the first thing. <laughs> that's folk, the first thing. They ain't going to listen. Folks been rebelling. So they're they going to rebel against that. So they're not going to listen. Folks don't go to church. That's the first thing right there. Mm -hmm. Then second thing, folks get online. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Church churches are streaming. Okay. So since I didn't have my cough, which I got my concoction and my cough was just about gone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> online. You know, and where, okay, they say, oh, okay, we can't get together, uh, 10 folk, however many folk in one room. You can get 10,000 online, but you know what I'm saying? You can get a lot of people online and God is still going to be glorified. You know yeah. what I'm saying? God will be glorified. He cannot stop it. He will not win. The devil will not win this. God will be glorified. Jesus' name will be lifted. That's just it. That's so just it. You that and coronavirus can go have yeah. several seats, as they that, say around that, here. <laughs> coronavirus. You might as well go on set it down somewhere. All right, guys, we've got oh. a quick, 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 quick like a bunny break. Uh, and then we're going to come back and dive right into our interview with mm. Mr. Reginald Foreman. So y'all keep it locked right here, man, because brother's testimony is uh, that deal. Keep it locked. Have you ever wanted to be on TV? If the answer is yes, we have great news. Social media is the new TV and you are the star. And you don't need a crazy budget of millions of dollars. At Focus Network Media, we teach business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and artists how to use video to build their own network on social media. You have the power of TV in the palm of your hand. Go, Go where, where the, the people, people are, are, and the people are on social media. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to St. Louis Hustle Podcast, coming live and direct from the STL Credit Fix Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm your boy, also that is my girl, Michelle A. And we have a very, very special guest in the building. You guys know we titled this episode overcoming adversity and we didn't just want to talk about it we brought you someone today who has been about it and is still overcoming and has got the 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 t-shirt the hat and everything to boot so without further ado i'm going to introduce the son and present to others our good friend mr reginald foreman how you doing brother i'm doing good i'm doing good hey everybody out there in the st louis hustle land What's going on, man? Listen, tell everybody real quick who you are. Uh, and uh, the first, you, you got at, introduced to adversity at a very early age, man. So let's just pick it up from there and dive right in, brother. Well, my name is, like I said, Reginald Foreman. Again, I'm an at-risk specialist, um, author, speaker, uh, fashion designer, and inventor. And my life started out in Chicago projects with a mother on drugs, and, and I was raised fighting and running from gangs, joining gangs, and ended up with a, a illegal sentence in prison for 18 and a half years, and that's when I obeyed God and laid my life down, and, and, and now I'm starting a, a global business right now. I'm working, well, I've already started, I'm, I'm growing a global business. Okay, and you said you're an at-risk specialist. Break that down for us. What, what exactly is an at-risk specialist? So an at-risk specialist is someone who help, I help adults and youth navigate through their pain the struggles, things they've been through, and try to find a way to amass it, get ahead of it, and use it for their game. Mm -hmm. Then they say no pain, no gain. So since I've right. experienced so many of these things, uh, God has given me a gift, one, and I've done a lot of studying, and I help people turn their uh, pain into purpose. Awesome, man. I love that. And you said you were erroneously sentenced to time in prison, and this is where things got interesting for me. You went and did time. They let you out. After you turned your life around, devoted your life to Christ, and started down the right path for the first time in your life, then you get, what was it, a letter in the mail, a phone call? Tell us what happened after that. Um, I was illegally sentenced to 18 and a half years uh, for bank robbery. Mm -hmm. uh, they double charged me in state and federal prison. Um, like I said, and, and, and I was let out in the... How can I, let, let's go to the main, but I finally got back in the course, I, skip, I have to skip some parts, but I finally got back in the course after filing an appeal, and I ended up in the county jail, and I got a letter from the federal prison saying, your case is mute, meaning that it was closed, you've exasperated your remedies, you have, you can't file any more appeals, you mm -hmm. have two years to file appeals, and I didn't, uh, I didn't utilize that again, and um, next thing I know, I'm stuck with the feds, 
Wow. And I ended up going and, and running next door, talking to my mentor. Uh, and this is where God really showed me his power. Um, my mentor was a Spanish guy, and I was yelling, man, the feds just said I can't get out. I don't have no way out. And this man started laughing and praising God. And I'm trying to look through the brick wall like, why are you laughing <laughs> and praising God? And he said, now you will see God's power. Now you will see his hands move because you have no way else out. And that means like a lot of us, man, God is waiting for us to be back against the wall, flat out. Your fingers ain't crossed. You can't call auntie or uncle and you have to trust him. So I went into courts and they overturned my state case and um, they just dropped it down from nine years to three years, just charging me for the gun because of the way it wasn't running concurrent like it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up getting shipped to a uh, federal prison and it was like a lower level. I got there and I'm like, why am I going to, I know I got shipped back to another state prison, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And I just got my state case overturned. Like, why am I back in the state prison? And the mm -hmm. saying is, why are you trying to figure it out? God is already working it out. Or mm -hmm. already done worked it out. Right. So now I'm in this, this state prison and I'm fighting to get back to federal because I'm all in my mind is, how am I going to be the fed case in a state prison? Right. I wrote my lawyer, I wrote the judge, I wrote the prosecutor, and um, none of that worked. Four months later, I'm sitting in the classroom and um, R&D is where they receive you and deliver you out. The lady comes, the officer said, Mr. Foreman, we need you down at R&D. As I was walking to the door, I remember this young guy was mentoring. Uh, he was a wild young Haitian dude. None of the old heads would deal with him. And that's why I tell people now, the, the youth need discipline, but they need love. Right. And I was like his big brother. And he yelled out, hey, boy, today is your day. Things happen when it rains. I don't know if there was some voodoo or what. I was like, what does that mean, <laughs> things happen when it rains? Because it was actually pouring down rain outside. He said, it's your day today. As I went in there, the lady was typing on the computer. I sat down. She said, Mr. Foreman, you have immediate release. And I'm like, okay. But wow. just three months ago, there was a detainer in the computer. The federal prison said, they're coming to pick me up three months ago. So now my stomach is bubbling. I said, I'm going to ask her. I said, there's no hold on me in the computer. She said, no. I said, there's no detainer on me in the computer. She said, no. I said, I'm going to shut up and ride this out. So I get up. Right. She give, they give you the $100 when you get out of state prison. I walked to the front of the police car with the officer. Not the back. It was a woman. I got in the front seat with her. I said, this thing is feeling real. Drove me to the bus. They said, Mr. Foreman, have a nice life. I don't want to see you again. I jumped, I was jumping up on the ground. I just beat the feds. I just beat the feds. They never came and got me. Wow. That's the first half. Mm -hmm. So um, I get back, I get out in Miami, Florida, and I knew two things. Three things I tell people. If you've been in an abusive relationship, if you've been on drugs, and if you've been in prison, you need accountability. You mm -hmm. need somebody to hold you strong because you can't trust yourself in any kind of weakened state. So I knew at the age of 16, see, I had a way out of my uh, situation at 16. I had to rob a bank. My aunt and them who were deep in the church, but they Kojic, I mean, Holy Ghost, skirt down their ankles, no makeup, no, man, I was like, I ain't moving with them at 16 year old. I ain't come to no St. Louis or no Holy Ghost church. But now I'm 25 years old and I'm saying, I'm like, man, if I don't go up here, them people work and they go into church. Yeah. So I, I called them and moved up to St. Louis. I was dating the pastor's daughter, about to be a deacon, working at labor ready, temp service, not thinking about crime. Mm -hmm. While I'm doing that, my pastor's daughter started having dreams. She had four dreams that I went back to prison. And I'm like, you crazy. I ain't even thinking about crime. Mm -hmm. Three years later, 30, 30 months exactly, four days after Valentine's Day, 2014, 6 a.m. in the morning, I'm laying on the bed, one sock on, one sock off, I can remember. I hear a heavy knock, and if you ever heard of marshals or any police serve a warrant, it'll wake you up out of coma. Oh, yeah. I run downstairs, and they say, Mr. Foreman, we have a warrant for your arrest. Put me in handcuffs, took me to the police car, turned around and said, you were let out of prison erroneously by mistake. Wow. Now, in this state, I was not mad at, I, I was mad at them, but I wasn't thinking about the police. I wasn't thinking about the, the government. I was mad at God. How can I change my life, relocate from Miami to St. Louis, get in the church, and you telling me I'm going back in there? What is the purpose of changing? Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting on the edge of my bed in tears, like anger, suicidal, ready to kill or whatever. An older guy came to me, I would call him old head. He started speaking life into me. And, and, and that's why I tell people, you got to accept the help that God sends. You mm -hmm. got to accept the help. He started speaking to me, and then while my head was down, I, in my mind, I was going to say, mm -hmm. Negro, but you know another word. I don't want to hear nothing else about God, but I didn't. I said, whatever you say, man. He started working on my case, and I started to occupy myself during the situation. 
I don't have it in front of me, but I had, I got like 30 some certificates where I was bettering myself, anger management, uh, going to classes. And I, I was voted prisoner, most likely to succeed, prisoner of the month. Yes, they have that type of award in federal prison. Wow. I voted to be prisoner of the month. Four years later, uh, he filed the appeal because they wanted me to do my whole nine and a half. They didn't want to give me the time I served on my state. They was like, we didn't agree to run that time concurrent. You got to do your whole nine and a half as if my four and a half before did not matter. So wow. he's filing an appeal. I'm preparing myself with God. Four years later, I won the appeal, and I was released out of prison. So I served four and a half years, three years on the street, and four more years. So I served eight and a half years altogether. Man, that is crazy, bro. Uh, and I know that, you know, some people who uh, – I, I know tons of people who've been in and out, and, and sometimes you think people would rather be in than out based on their lifestyle and the decisions that they make. But I can imagine turning your life around living three years, walking the straight and narrow, and then getting a call like that. But guess what, folks? That is just the first adversity that he had to overcome. So I, I know uh, Michelle actually introduced me, uh, Reggie, and uh, I know you know him for a few years. Uh, so, so you know a little bit more about his story, so I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Um, now, do, now, do we need to go to break? Because he has such a, um, an exciting story. I don't want to jump into this here thing. We got to cut the break in thing, because we could go in for round two. All right, let's let's take a, let's take a short break, man. Let me let me let you guys hear from uh, uh, Reggie and tell you all about the new book that he's got uh, that's actually available right now. And I want you guys to do me a favor, man. I want you to support this brother. Uh, click on the link in the uh, bio, the description. Uh, and go ahead and grab this book, but let me cut to his commercial so you guys can check it out right now. Hello everyone, my name is Reginald Foreman, author, speaker, designer, and inventor. I come to you to talk about my new book that's Purpose in Your Pain. God still loves you even when he doesn't answer your way. Yes, I know that's a deep title. God gave me the vision of this book a few months back. I was on a 21 day fast seeking him for help. Uh, some situation I was going through and he showed me this book through my fast and it says God still loves you even when he doesn't answer your way. What I'm finding out is a lot of people in this world are asking God why. There's purpose in your pain. We all go through pain. A lot of you may know about me being incarcerated illegally to 18 and a half years in prison. They set me free for three years and came back and got me and said you were let out of prison erroneously by mistake. What? In this book we're going to talk about my situation, I'll go into deeper depths that it's a compilation of my book, Live Determined, but there'll be deeper things I'll talk about that I didn't talk about in my first book. So I'm here to try to help you, hopefully through this book, get some healing and some, some understanding. If you want to contact me, you can locate me at reginaldforman.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Cortez Hustle. That is my girl, Michelle A. We're sitting here with a special guest, but I got to mention that we're coming live and direct from the St. Louis Credit Repair Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Cost-effective credit repair done by professionals. Go to stlcreditfix.com if you need help with your credit. So before we jump to the break, Michelle, you was gonna talk a little bit about how you and Reggie met. Uh, yeah. Then get on to tragedy number two, right? <laughs> Man, okay. So I met Reg um, a couple years back. Um, I met him, I was actually in a Christian apparel store looking for, because anybody that knows me knows that I love my Christian apparel. So I love to get my little t-shirts. Uh, they make great statement pieces. And so I was looking for a new t-shirt and the gal that was in the Christian bookstore that I was in told me all about Reggie. And I'm like, oh man, I need to connect with this dude, you know? So we, we were able to link up and exchange some information and, uh, you know, we just, just click from a business perspective. And so... Um, man, he was a powerful dude, went out to a couple speaking engagements that he had at a couple churches. And um, I just love the connectivity. And so from there, um, man, I just got a, uh, an opportunity to know his story, you know. Um, and, and so, Reg, um, so backtracking slightly, you know, you you incarcerated twice, uh, two times. And, uh, you know, after you got out second time, um, you know, take us from the point, you know, you, you, you started a fashion line, things kind of started popping for you, you know, give us a little bit of that, you know, pick us, pick us up in the story from there. And then uh, we'll, we'll jump back into the, 
to the tale of woes and what happened to you. Indeed. So yeah, when I got out of prison, um, I the first time I got out, um, I didn't really have no focus. I was just working at the temp service. The second time I got out, I started to focus on my gift. Okay. And um, but I knew that I heard a friend talking about college. So I wanted to go to school because really no one, not many people in my family went to college and graduated. We have a few, but especially because of who I was, I was the black sheep of the family, the one in the streets, the one get kicked out of schools. I'm going to college. And I end up going to college to take up culinary arts to be a chef because I read a book in prison by Chef Jeff, uh, who was been on Rachel Ray TV. He's a multi-million dollar chef who went to prison for 10 years for drugs. And I was chasing something to prove something in my family. So I ended up quitting and switching my major over because I like cooking, but I didn't love it. I knew I can get in with a federal record because he had one. But after a while, I was like, you got to do what you love. I switched over to graphic arts because my stepmother spoke something to my life at 14. And I mm -hmm. tell people God is always speaking. She said to me, you're an artist. You should do something with cars and T-shirts. I was 14 years old when she said this. Wow. So that went back to my life that I can draw and write poems. And... um. I switched over to culinary arts, and as soon as you get on your, your focus and it's your grind, mm. stuff starts to happen. Me and my aunt started bumping heads because I was trying to do stuff my way. Why you ain't working these jobs and you chasing these dreams? She wasn't really hating, but she under, under she only could speak from what she understood. Right. And um, I ended up quitting the school. I was tired. Of, then I was also tired of all these extra classes, English and all. Like, man, I don't even like school. I just need to get in. But I didn't know enough wisdom to get in the trade class. Right. So I quit school. I ended up working two jobs when I was at this print shop on Berkeley. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing T-shirts, and I saw T-Pain on the BT Awards. I said, God is speaking to you through anything. Yeah. He raised up his award. He said, I want to thank all my haters for this award. Popped in my head was God bless my haters. That was my second shirt, actually, but I love to tell that testimony because I was watching BT Hip Hop Awards. Right. And um, my first shirt was God made me work and break me. I went to the lady that worked. I said, I got some ideas for some T-shirts. That's when graphic design shirts were starting to pop. She said, you work here? Go ahead. I was selling my shirts. I had an old red Fred Seffin pickup truck. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm driving around St. Louis from barbershop to beauty salon slanging T-shirts. And I saw how people liked the words. God made me work and break me. This woman overcame cancer. One overcame a bad marriage. One bought the God bless my haters because uh, this girl was at her job getting on her nerves. And I said, do you do know what it says? God bless my haters. I said, but whatever you want to buy it for, hey. So I was selling shirts left and right. But what happened was I did not know how to scale a business. I was just a hustler. Right. I, quit, I quit doing business for a year, speeded right. up. I ended up at this church and got prophetically spoken to out of nowhere. A woman behind me whispered in my ear, I never met her before, and said, are you trying to start a business? God said he'll do it if you keep going and put him first. Started back up. A business guy came to me. He said, Reggie, do you have any business costs? I was like, no. He said, do you even have a website? I said, no. He said, how do you expect to compete on this level or that level? You don't even have that. I yeah. listened to him, ex ex accept the help that God sends. I took a $1,000 income tax, not 5000 not 20000 I took a $1,000 income tax, right. got my website, got another computer, got my business cards, and did my boy Willie Moore Jr., which y'all know in St. Louis, because I had just started serving with him in 20. 2009, he came uh -huh. to me and said, Reggie, tweak up the shirt a little bit, make the words dope. And I did, and it was godly image. A lot of people had it. Even one of my people that was grinding with me got a tattooed on her arm. Godly mm -hmm. image. I started selling shirts from left to right all over the city. And then I got orders from Africa and France. Now, oh in the midst of this, I was doing this clean comedy show. Comedy show, wasn't And he, he knew my story. He said, Reggie, go up there and open up. So I was doing empowerment speaking before the comedy. He said, open up. I would tell my story. Now, when people would walk in, I got a booth. They would see my shirts, and this is one of my polo shirts, and I got on my hat. And they would, they would buy some then. But when I got through telling my story, I would have two lines of people. I wow. started speaking. I was on the same platform, Miss Robbie and Tim Norman from Sweetie Pies. I right. had two lines of people. I was getting opening doors. And mm -hmm. then someone came to me and said, you need to write a book. I was like, ah, I don't want to write no book. I'm going to wait till I'm in Paris. I'm in France, and my name is big, and I'll make more money. But God had another plan. So, Reggie, so the, the merchandising, so the T-shirts, the book, the merchandising. So, so, you're, so you're doing good, okay? So you're flying high with that. Take us to, you know, you find love at some point, and you get married. You know, take us mm -hmm. into your family life. You know, so we're cascading up. Take us into your family life, because we're riding this roller coaster. We're going up. You know, wagon well, go up, another drop is coming. 
Yeah, yeah so I, I, I ended up getting married in 2011. Um, and me and my wife at that time, we were trying to have children. And she, it was hard because she has fibroids growth in her. And mm -hmm. um, it was hard to get pregnant. And, and one time she did get pregnant. Um, it was all the symptoms, pregnancy tests. And she went mm -hmm. to the doctor and they said, but there's no fetus in there. So she had all the symptoms, but there was no fetus in the sac. And they called it blightum, ovum, ovum blightum, I always get it wrong, but it's some symptom like that. And she was yeah. devastated. She barely was up and down in faith. Um, she was done. Didn't want to try no more. She was done. Uh -huh. I said about a year and a half, two years later, she came back to me and she was like, I don't know if she got through watching Joe Osteen or whatever. She was excited. Her faith was up. I want to try again. So at this time, this is when we going up. When the week we doing good, the next week we bumping heads. I'm 40 mm -hmm. years old. She comes to me and says she want to try again. I'm like, okay. But then she said, I don't want to just have one child. You 40, I'm 36. I want two at the same time. I want twins. And I, inside oh, me, I was like, you done lost your mind. That was inside a me. Okay. Inside me, I was thinking this. Because at first, I'm like, I'm 40 years old. And I'm trying to build this business. And me and you stay into it. We, we, we bumping heads. But I said yes in front of her by faith. We do what we do as uh, uh, married people start, you know, to make a baby. Time goes on. She has a pregnancy test. She's pregnant again. Okay, that happened before. I'm at my side job. She goes to the doctor without me. She didn't want me to go. And they say they heard a heartbeat. She called me. I was like, okay, cool. We got a heartbeat. Then she said, boy, the doctor said he heard two heartbeats. I, and I just remember, like I said, I almost drove off the side of the road. I was like, <laughs> did God just answer this girl's prayer? I can't believe you got to fathom someone speaking that and it happens. Right. And we ended up, and it ain't, it ain't in our families, neither one of our families. Right. So, you know, with twins, and then as it go along, um, that this is my first children. You want to go for the, you go all the way with God. We want a boy and a girl. Yeah. It's time to go check the sex, sexes. We end up with a boy and a girl. I wow. said, God, you on a roll here. So while in the midst of that, I'm doing my speaking events, 21 Days of Greatness. I'm traveling in Baltimore, uh, Philly, all over. My my ex wife, she's my ex wife now. Now that y'all, most some of y'all know. We going together doing events. Um, we getting inboxes. We getting praise reports. I gotta say all this because it was amazing. People yeah. love our testimony. About three days after my big event, I'm in the house downstairs watching TV, and I heard my ex wife um, upstairs scream. She called my name. I run upstairs, and at 15 weeks into pregnancy, she's standing over a puddle of water. Mm -hmm. And so I know what that means, and I know she know what that means or what we thought. But we, I, I went into super faith. Like there's no way. Illegal right. prison, illegal prisons, uh, abuse, people praising us for it. This ain't the will of God. And a lot of us say the faith people, well, this is not the will of God. I know this ain't happening. So she said, maybe I peed on myself because of the growth that's pushing my cervix. And I was like, okay, that's what it is. An hour later, I go downstairs and I heard an even worse screech. Ooh, sometimes when I tell it, I can see it. I come upstairs. She's sitting on the edge of the stuff. She said, look down there. And it was two feet hanging out of her vagina, two little feet trying to come out. So we rushed to the hospital, and lo and behold, the doctor checked the baby and said, yes, you uh, lost your little girl. She died. Mm. So I, I just remember the pain of when I went to prison, changed my life, and went back in, and this was just as hard. But I didn't have time to sit amongst that. I had to believe for her. She was really done with God. I had to believe for her, and I said, you have to stay strong because we have a little boy in there. And my son, um, 27 weeks into that, he, I'm in the hospital room, 27 weeks, she sees in, she had to get two surgeries on her cervix. I'm laying in there asleep, and all I heard was roughing all in the hospital room. And then all I heard him saying, that he can't breathe, he got to come out right now. I said, now? So he ended up coming out at two pounds, one ounce of premium. And, um, but he came out screaming. And I was like, wow, he's going to be all right. So he stayed in the hospital 75 days. She stayed in 45 days. And that's when I said, God, we need to talk. Yeah, that that man. Um, how or how how could you not be at the same place your wife was at the time during all of that? Uh, because I, I, you know, I think of myself as very spiritual. I believe. I, I think that my belief is strong, but man. You know, from all that you have gone through, it seems that if anybody had the right to denounce God, you know, I'm I'm mm. thinking, mm. I'm thinking Job here. Uh, 
Right. Right. <laughs> Me and you both. So how did you how did you stay strong, brother? That's a great question. That. that is a great question. Um, I always tell people, first of all, I really met God in prison. It was in a jailhouse religion. And for all my Bible people, whatever, Paul was going around kill, killing Christians, and he met Jesus on the way to Damascus on a horse. He knocked them off, and he went blind. And we call it the Damascus encounter. He really met Jesus. So that's how I feel in prison, because God spoke to me in the middle of my pain when I lost trial. You can see my TBN, CB, uh, CBN documentary. And I was cursing God out. Where the F were you when my mother was beating me? Where were you when they were chasing me home from prison? Where were you when I was out here trying to survive and eat? And God spoke to me and said, I have a purpose for it. So knowing that he spoke to me and knowing I've seen him answer so many prayers, I was mad at God, but you, I can't go into denial that he's not real for one thing. And then the second thing to answer your question, when I got saved at 20 years old, all I wanted to be, all I wanted to be was the biggest thug on the block because I got bullied a lot and I see how they got respect and I seen they got the baddest chicks. So I never had no dreams. So when God said he called me to be a prophet, I fasted for 21 days. It was like I got a whole new life and an identity. So it all, I'm, it's a little deeper for me because I was gone, dead, and he saved me. So I'll be, I'll be mad at him at times, but I'll be right back. <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Gotcha, guys. So when we come back, uh, we're not going to leave you guys here. This is not the end. Reggie is going to tell you a couple tips that you can use to help you get through adversity. But then we're going to show you what all of this pain actually led to. So keep it locked right here. Yo, what's up, St. Louis? Let me ask you a serious question. If I saw $20 about to fall out of your pocket, you want me to tell you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, I see three to $600 per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. See, over the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multi-millionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to $600 per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you wanna know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? We are back. We are back. You're hanging out with your girl, Michelle. Hey, and that is my homeboy, Cortez Hustle. We are chilling right here in the studios, you guys, with um, my boy, my homeboy, my bro ham, Mr. Reginald Foreman. And before we took our break, we were um, knee deep in his testimony and his story. Um, and before the break, we were going to talk about the other side of his um, of his story. We we're going to talk about everything um, that led up to where he is now, um, the other side of the adversity. Um, so, Reggie, tell us about those those points, right? The other side of the adversity. Let's talk about it. Well, um, the biggest thing that helped me is that people always ask me, "Is that, let's go here? You can be a Christian, but waking up with a purpose is what you need." Just because you wake up because you love God, what are you waking up to every day? So for me, purpose helps me every day. Every day I'm getting up because you will get hit with your, your child died or they illegal sentence you or your money ain't right. So I have to keep my mind renewed on purpose. Romans 12 and 2 said renew your mind. So one of the biggest things is to renew your mind. You can't stay in your past and sometimes you can't stay in your present. You got to believe in your future. My number two thing is I, I love to study successful people's uh, stories. When I started looking at Tyler Perry's real story and, and Oprah and Jim Carrey, who was homeless at 16, and all these people, 
that I understood that they bleed the same blood as me and they came through some tragedies. It took that lift off to me that maybe God is allowing me to go through. I'm the stepchild or he don't care about me because I know a lot of us go through that. And so when I understood that these people was went through was the same or worse than me, yeah. you know what I mean? And that keeps me going. My other thing, of course, is keep your spiritual and mental tank full. Yes. What is that? I stay, when something hits you, you got to pray immediately. We wait two, three days to pray, then your prayer is bouncing off the wall. And you have to, you don't have to be bishop such and such, but keep some word in you, keep some worship in because it releases. And then the other thing is my mental tank. My mental tank is studying success story, and I listen to coaches. I listen to other uh, podcasts and, and, and uh, inspirational and natural business content because it's taking me forward. If you're building something and you focus on something better, then you believe you're going somewhere. I'll say it again. If you're building something, and you focus on something that's better, you're doing something. But if you just watch the latest TV show every day and just deal with the kids, how are you building for something higher? So me, I was a dude that would slap you in the face with a pistol, but then the next time I would try to commit suicide. So I went through so many mental issues. You have, if I can say it again, you have to renew your mind. Awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, so let's talk about, like, let's talk about where you are now. So everything, mm. all of the pain that you went through, what was it all for? Let's talk about where you are now. Where did that pain lead you, Reggie? You, you know, that's a good question. I like how you said that, what does it all lead to? I don't know if I have a 100% answer, but I can tell you, um, I left off where um, I said, I, I left my ex-wife in the hospital. She was at peace. And I said, God, we need to talk. I said, why in the world does this make sense to lose my child, everything I've been through? And as I was sitting there, I had uh, Reggie Lyon was a, a, a character like Ralph Lauren Polo Bear on a T-shirt. But I saw him being transformed to a dog. And I was like, man, where that vision come from? So this is Reggie the Lion. If most of you haven't seen it, this is the prototype. This is what I was, I was able to do with my budget. But he talks. He speaks positive affirmation to kids. So I saw all the things I write being put into a dog. Nice. And then at, when I was at my side job, the whole movie script was coming out like water. The cartoon, I saw the app, everything was shown to me. But what, oh, I skipped the part. What happened first was I saw MADD, which is Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Because God was showing me how this was the woman, if you know about that's for years she's been doing this. Her 13-year-old daughter got hit by a drunk uh, driver and died. And she turned into an organization, which we see many people doing that. So my thing is, what do you do with the pain? Yeah. What, how do you manifest and do something? God will show you because there are many people. We can look at the Mike Brown incident. Look what his uh, mother and father are doing. So mm -hmm. there's something that you can do with it. it. You can't sit it and you can't let it defeat you. So Register Line was turned into a positive affirmation. And I had a businesswoman who was a, strong in the word. She was with me, working with me. She said, Reggie, God showed me in a dream or prayer or whatever that for you losing one child, you're going to help millions of children. So I was like, wow. Then wow. another guy came to me when I was working. He was working at a friend's house doing tile. He was a prophet. He came to me at the end of the day and he said, Reggie, I saw clear as day that you're going to help children believe before they can doubt through Reggie Lyon. I seen them in the, in the toddlers laying in the bed listening to the doll speak. Mm -hmm. And I seen them running around, dragging the doll around, speaking the positive. You're smart. You're strong. You, you can do it. God loves you. You have purpose. And this is what he says. So what I'm saying is, I can't say that it brought my child back, but you better believe what will I do now is being manifested. And also, now we have Reggie Lyon in the book. This coloring book is a, a book of learning and, it, and coloring pages. Where and I got a chance to include my son. So it's called The Adventures of Reggie Lyon and Jeremiah, because my son was di diagnosed with uh, cerebral palsy. Oh. And that's another hard thing. Um, he's a handsome, beautiful boy. You can go on my page, but he, he's, he's in therapy for his walking. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's hard. It's hard. But what I'm saying is, like Cortez asked me earlier, the way I'm able to keep going is my purpose and a real relationship with God. I ain't talking about nothing I found. Oh, me and God battle, but your, my arm's too short to really box with God. <laughs> you better know it. You better know it. Awesome. Before I let you get out of here, man, uh, I, I know... Uh, you got to run. But one of the things that stuck out uh, uh, to me in, in, in your story is when the uh, big head honcho over at Bloomingdale's told you that you were going to have some struggles with this particular product because you got God on the front. I like your response, man. So share your response to him 
but then go ahead and take us out of here and just tell everybody where they can go and find uh, more about your story and how they can purchase your book and everything else. Indeed, it's so much to my story, y'all. It's a movie. We do have film producers that have been looking at me. But anyway, um, one of my mentors came to me and he said, I want you to meet somebody. He felt it valuable enough to take me to, we was at the bread company, and this guy, older, 80-year-old white guy, um, he was the big guy at Bloomingdale's back in the days when Ralph Lauren brought his first tie in there. And Calvin Klein created his first uh, rain jacket. And he, he was the guy there, and he, was, he said, he looked at my stuff. I didn't have the prototype. I just had the pictures. He looked at it. He liked the designs. He said, this is good. This is nice stuff. I like the idea. He said, but there's two things. Because it used to be Leo the Lion. And so he said, I don't like Leo the Lion, the name. And I said, why? And he said, because it's too common. He said, I said, okay, I'm going to listen. What would you name it? And then he said, why don't you name it your name? I was like, he said, Reggie. Reggie the Lion. He created my theme song right in front of me. So, but then the second thing he said, I'm going to tell you this. You're going to have a lot of big problems going to big box office stores because you got God on the front. And see, this is what I tell people. You can have all the faith in the world, but you need to study your lane. You need to study your business area. You need to know what you're doing in business and in God. See, I'd already had been reading and studying. I said, let me show you something. The Christian faith is the buying power. is one of the most powerful buying power in the world. Some point a billion a year we spend in the Christian faith. The buying power is huge. Look at Chick-fil-A. And that's everybody buying it. But a lot of Christians eat there just because it's a Christian restaurant. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, I said, I said, everybody don't like Pizza Hut. Everybody don't like Papa John's. Everybody don't like Sprite. Everybody don't like Pepsi. And then I also found, I said, if you know about VeggieTales, they made 60 million and they were mostly cartoons. I said, there's a whole lane. And then I said to him also, people who don't run up in the church, who just want their child to be raised right, and hear positive affirmations already done told me. I'm talking about thugs who's like, man, I don't go to church like that. But boy, this is a good idea because I want my kids to grow up better than me. They already told me they'll buy it. He looked at me. He said, man, you did your homework. So that was one of the biggest tests because this was a big guy. He knew what he was saying. And uh, he's made plenty of money. But he said, you did your homework. So now to find me, my, my website is ReginaForman.com. And then we have ReginaLion.com that we created. But you can find me on ReginaForman.com. My Instagram is Reginald underscore Foreman. My Facebook is Reginald Foreman God Made. I'm barely on Twitter, but you can find it on there too. But that's how you can find me out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that was an amazing story, Reggie. We thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. When we come back, we got your responses to the question of the day. So keep it locked right here. The St. Louis Social Podcast is brought to you by Reggie the Lion. Go to ReggieTheLion.com, grab yourself a copy of the coloring book, and keep up with all the latest developments of the dog and everything that Reggie the Lion is planning to bring to our children. Also, check out OfficeHuddlePrint.com. All of the graphic designs that you've seen for the St. Louis Social Podcast are courtesy of Office Huddle Print Shop. Our good friends helped us with logos, flyers, thumbnails, even our merchandise, courtesy of OfficeHuddlePrint.com. St. Louis Credit Repair Institute, get your credit in the right order. SELCreditFix.com, they average 50 to 150 point increases for over 100,000 customers so far, and you can be next. SELCreditFix.com. The St. Louis Hustle Podcast is a copyrighted production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of the content of this show is strictly prohibited. I Hustle Media Group, a better way to market. Man, oh man. Woo! <laughs> man. Powerful, powerful stuff. Uh, man. Reggie, uh, that testimony is amazing. I love that he said that doll has the potential to help children believe before they can doubt. And that yes. is amazing. Yes, I, I love that he said that, um, you know, through his tragedy, you know, the tragic loss of one child, he can save so many others, you know, oh. um, Reggie, you know, the Reggie Lion. Um, just so much is being birthed through um, what he's doing. So shout out to uh, Reginald. Absolutely. Man. And we've got a new question of the day. I'm going to give you the results of our poll from last week's question of the day. But before we get into that, uh, Michelle, I got to ask you, what is you wearing? 
Um, shade? I, I uh, mean, no shade, but I'm just saying, I know you've been going through some stuff with the job and they've been, you know, uh, this virus is has got people all mixed up and turned, so. Well, well, again, Shay, what happened was, <laughs> um, this is what happens when uh, coronavirus, uh, this is what happened with corona, get hold of you. I, you wake up confused, you know. Um, I ain't know if I was coming or going. I, I mean, I, I I woke up and then I, I put on my 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 Nike stuff like I was gonna go to the gym, and then I, I had a mindset like I wanted to go to work, so I put a blazer on. But then it was St. Patrick's Day, so I put on my um I put on my shamrock um leggings. Uh, shout out to Chelsea Flanoy. Happy birthday, girl. Um, and then I got on my orange uh, Nike shots, you know. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, what's going on, man? It's that coronavirus. It's got me, man. It's got me out. It's got me out here tripping like a, you know. And they told you not to come back to work, didn't they? <laughs> They tell you not to come back to work. They, you know what? See, this is what had happened, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I know. You know, I was on last week, and I told y'all. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, this is what happened. Hee, hee, ha, ha. And um, I was trying to be responsible. And yesterday, I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead. And I'm going to just call the people real quick, right? So I had to go through some loops some loops and I called my doctor and then it was like, oh yeah, you gotta call the people uh, and then you gotta talk to them. So I called the people, you know, I called the people that the CDC, ABC place, right? And I was like, hey, people, um, I'm a symptom. I got a call. <laughs> and uh, my uh, they was like, they asked me a bunch of questions and the people at the CDC, ABC place, they was like, um, ma'am, get the hell off our phone. You don't have the symptoms for the uh, coronavirus. They say you don't have that, ma'am. You you got you might have you know some bullet cracking apple, but you ain't got that. You ain't got the other boogers. You ain't got coronavirus. You ain't got that. Uh, take your ass to work is what they said. Sorry, Lord, but that's what they basically <laughs> told me. I was like, Gucci. So I was like, okay. I found my blazer. I was like, ah, oh, let me go to work. Turn up, turn up, turn up. And um, uh, uh, so I sent my boss an email. I said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and bless y'all place with this face. And uh, I'll be there tomorrow after the show because that's what I do. <laughs> and it was like, hey, no. Uh, uh, scratch? What? The record oh. scratch. Uh, now, we, since you're not 100% sure that you don't have it, why don't you just go ahead and work from home again? Huh? I, not in my feelings. Now I'm offended. Y'all don't want me there? What the? Eh? Y'all don't want this <laughs> black in the building? So, you know, every time I don't go to the office, they have all these system problems. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It, it's in the anointing. They don't understand that I carry. See, God chose me to carry some of that anointing. There you go. Um, and see, every time they say, go and work from home, I keep the anointing in my house. That's okay. I store the anointing in the house. And just, I keep it here. I just go out there and anoint people on my highways and byways. Y'all don't want the anointing in the building. That's fine. Let your little systems and your little VPNs. There you go. There you go. All right. Huh. Well, Shelley, we had the question of the day last week. Can an entrepreneur and a non-entrepreneur survive in a long-term relationship uh we put a poll up on the page and you said no um 10 out of 13 people said yes how many people i mean <laughs> only three agreed with you and said no and i believe i'm gonna have to go check the analytics that you might have been the one who voted no all three times i'm just saying um, <laughs> you know what? I'm you know what? Okay. So, well, I did, so before um, we get out of here, man, we got a new question of the day. And if you guys want to actually participate and be in the show, you can DM us on Instagram at St. Louis Hustle Podcast a video, 60 seconds or less, your answer to today's question and why. So hit them with today's question of the day. 
Okay, so real quick, today's question of the week e or question of the day is: um, You see your boss's spouse out with somebody else, okay, on an obvious date. Do you tell your boss, okay, mm. and you work with both your boss and your uh, boss's spouse? You work with them both, and you see the other one out on an obvious date. Do you tell? Yes I, or no? I've got a suspicion that this is coming from a real place. Uh, but we not going to get into nobody's business. That's the question of the day. Yes. Guys, we'll put the poll up on the page. Make sure that you uh, follow us on Instagram at St. Louis Hustle Podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And of course, the audio recording of this MP3 file will be available for download at 11 a.m. this morning. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all of your podcasting places. Uh, this has been real, but more importantly, it has been real fun as usual. So that's it for us here at the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. Thank you for all of your support. Shout out to our sponsors, Office Huddle Print Shop, uh, St. Louis Credit Repair Institute, uh, Michelle and her media company. We are doing big things. And if you, my friend, want to uh, promote the show or advertise on the show, then all you got to do is inbox Cortez Hustle or Michelle A., and we'll let you know what you need to do because, to become a part of the show. Special thanks to our special guest, Mr. Reginald Foreman. Make sure y'all go click the link in the bio. Go get his book. Make a donation to his efforts to bring Reggie the Lion to our youth all over the world. Until we talk to y'all next time, we want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up. Oh, peace.